some basic nest designs of birds. These open cup nests are used by many little birds, like the passerines, such as the pipits, larks, canaries, thrushes, robins, and many others. These nests are often camouflaged by attaching pieces of tree bark, lichen, dead leaves, or moss, and they are bound with spiderweb to keep them all together. They are constructed with coarse outer materials and lined inside with soft material. Here is the male African Paradise flycatcher incubating the eggs on his neat cup-shaped nest in a tree canopy. And then we have the platform nest. It is a basic nest and not fancy at all. This massive Varro's eagle nest is very old and it has been used and added onto for many years. It is literally a leveled platform on which to lay the eggs. Large twigs of varying lengths are used for its construction on a cliff ledge or in the fork of a large tree. Most raptors and herons build these platform nests. This is a crowned eagle chick in its nest. And these are the adult crowned eagles on another nest about to start incubation. And then you get the floating platform nest. It floats on the water. And this is a red-knobbed coot on his newly constructed nest on a farm dam. They use dried reeds and leaves to construct it with. Then we get the enclosed ball nests of the birds like the weavers. They are woven onto reed stalks or onto the end of very thin tree branches. The weavers weave these nests with green grass or fine strips of reed leaves. When the grass dries, it shrinks into a tighter, more compact and waterproof construction. Some of these pendant ball-shaped nests, like this eastern golden weaver nest, do not have an entrance tunnel. The nests are very neat, with all the loose threads tucked very neatly away. But the nest of the spectacled weaver has a very long entrance tunnel. Another form of closed ball nest that we get is the incredibly unique nest of the Cape Penduline tit. This one is made of pure sheep's wool. It has a false entrance under the main entrance spout to fool predators like snakes. These birds open the entrance spout with their foot when they enter. And they close it with the top of their head when they leave. And they always make sure it is properly closed. And then we get the nest scrape, which is literally a shallow depression that the birds make by scraping the soil, sand or gravel away with their feet. Watch how this female three-banded plover scrapes away some shale from the nest area, which is situated near a pan in an old quarry. This time the slightly larger male helps with the nest scraping, all the while chattering excitedly with the female. And notice how the female rearranges the tiny pieces of shale with her beak. Every so often the male comes and helps the female with the nest scraping.
Many ground birds nest in scrapes on the ground like this. They often surround the eggs with animal droppings or small stones and tiny sticks to help with the camouflage. Notice the colour and the cryptic markings of the eggs too. Some ground birds, like the Korans and the Thick Knees, lay their eggs on the ground without much of a scrape. No nest building went into creating this Thick Knee nest. The eggs are cryptically marked and well camouflaged to their surroundings. These are the eggs of the spotted Thick Knee lying on the bare ground and notice some animal droppings and pebbles around the eggs too. And these are the very camouflaged eggs of a water thickney, and they match their surroundings perfectly. The speckles and blotches on the eggs match the substrate around them. Then we get the large dome-shaped nest of the Hammerkop, which is flattened at the bottom with a bulging dome-shaped roof. It has a large central chamber, which is lined with soft material like grass, plant down and even feathers. The inner chamber is also lined and insulated with mud so that it is totally weatherproof and cosy. The opening is usually near the top. These Hammerkop nests are usually found near water. Can you spot this one? There it is, high up on a cliff ledge. And zoomed in. And look at this one on a very precarious outcrop near a seasonal river in the Karoo. And some Hammerkop nests are in the fork of some strong trees. These massive nests are highly sought after by large birds like owls and raptors that often evict the Hammerkop. Some eagles, geese and eagle owls will nest on top of the roof. The nests of swallows and martins are made from mud pellets. The swallows gather mud from the edge of puddles and it is mixed with water and saliva in the mouth of the bird. This is a greater striped swallow's nest under an overhang on a cliff. See the different colours of mud that it used to build this nest with an extra long tunnel. The mud starts to set the moment it is carried in the mouth of the bird. And each pellet is carefully placed neatly in a row. And as each row dries, the next layer is placed carefully in its place. These lesser striped swallows were building a nest under the eaves in a corner of our patio. And here is one of the three chicks that they successfully raised in this nest that season. The male coming in to feed the chicks. Not all swallow nests have a long entrance tunnel. These nests of the South African cliff swallows have a very short entrance, which is on the underside of the nest. These nests are built under a bridge in the Karoo. And not all mud nests are closed with an entrance tunnel. This rock martin nest is a cup-shaped nest under the eaves of a building where it will always stay dry. Many birds nest in holes and the birds that are unable to excavate their own nesting holes will use natural tree cavities to nest in. This African hoopoe is bringing food to an incubating female in a natural tree cavity. Crowned hornbills use a large natural cavity in a tree to nest in, but then the female seals herself in the nest using mud brought by the male and her own excrement and leftover food. Only the barbets and the woodpeckers are able to excavate their own nesting holes in trees. 
and both the males and the females help with the excavation of these holes. The entrance hole is round and the nest is usually sloping vertically down the tree trunk, often away from the prevailing weather and rain. This is a Nisner woodpecker female at her nesting hole. And this is a black collared barbet with some wood chips that it is removing from the cavity that it is excavating in a dead branch of a tree. Some birds like the kingfishers and the bee eaters excavate nests in sandbanks with their beaks and they remove the sand backwards with their feet. These are nests excavated in a large sandbank by the white-fronted bee-eaters along the Great Fish River. These nesting holes or tunnels can be up to 3 meters long in some species, but 1.5 meters is the norm. These long narrow tunnels in the sandbank are normally excavated at a gradient moving slightly upwards to prevent rain from entering and flooding the tunnel and the nesting cavity at the end of the tunnel. Birds like ant-eating chats will excavate a tunnel in the roof of an artfar burrow. Like in this photo, they excavated a hole that is very round. The tunnel can extend up to 30 to 90 centimeters long and it ends in a wide nesting chamber that is lined with dry grass and rootlets. Here are some ant-eating chat chicks at their nest entrance in a donga. Birds like starlings and woodoo poos cannot excavate their own nesting holes in trees, so they have to use ready excavated holes that are available, like these black-bellied starlings using an old olive woodpecker hole. Most birds only use their nests for breeding, but some will also use them for shelter when roosting at night. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and post any comments you have down below.